Chainsaw Valkyrie here, and today I have a special preview for you that I'm going to have published, but you get to see today. They are Tales of Terror from the Mountains of Appalachia. My people came from those hills. In my entire life, I've heard stories about granny witches, haints, and the hairy beasts that stalk the lands there. All of these stories are based out of that culture and on those legends. They tie together in some way and are connected to tell a larger story. There are Easter eggs and cameos. So gather around, boys and ghouls, for Tales from the Holler, Chapter 1, Claude Hopper. In the forest surrounding our mountaintop home, where the deer and the wolves and the black bear do roam, a creature exists of a terrible shape, with humongous feet, half man and half ape. This beastie resides down in old brogy holler, neath the sticking mud pits where the boar go to waller. He's monstrously big, like a giant grizzle bear. From his head to his toes, he is covered in hair. Blacker than pitch and thick as molasses, striking fear and a dread into all of the masses. This creature is simply called the clawed hopper, and to cross paths with him could be a heart stopper. He comes out at night, stalking the land, to find him a meal, be a livestock or man. His smell is disgusting, like brave dirt and fish, or some kind of roadkill a wagon has squished. When he roams about, the forest falls silent. Not a creature will store, cause he's vicious and violent. This cannibal creature will catch you alone. He'll chew off your flesh and he'll gnaw on your bones. He'll swallow you down like a piece of fat bat. That's exactly what happened to my third cousin Jack. It was Halloween day when Jack met his fate at the hands of the beast with its apish-like gait. Jack was out digging taters with Cletus McSween when they were both boys about seventeen. It was just about dark and they were digging like crazy because Cletus was planning to go courting with Daisy, the girl who lived just a small ways down the road not far from the pond where the bullfrogs abode. He needed to meet her, perhaps at 6.30, and he needed to wash, cause he stunk and was dirty. So they dug in a frenzy, like a couple machines, my third cousin Jack and Cletus McSween. They were putting their treasure of spuds in a sack, and that's when the clodhopper launched his attack. A rock came a-flying and struck Cletus' head. He knocked him plumb out and left him for dead. When Cletus woke up, while well, Jack, he was gone, and the taters and Cletus were there all alone. There was nothing but taters and burlap and blood, and some gigantic footprints left there in the mud. That happened many a year in the past, but my third cousin victim would not be his last. He came and stole hogs from the old Dottie farm and tore off my great uncle Ferris's arm. He's killed and he's plundered and stolen livestock and beat Bobby Gentry to death with a rock. He roars in the night, he whoops and he howls, makes blood-chilling shrieks and deep-throated growls. He's a shadow of death, this fur-pelted demon, and if he finds you at night, you will soon be a-screamin'. The clodhopper's said to be nine feet or taller. He's a killer for sure, this apish man brawler. The hulking behemoth still seen now and then, out in his swamp with his kith and his kin, a family of cannibal, apish like brutes, covered with fur and their bone grinding tooths. Stay out of his swamp and be home before dark, or this beastie will surely tear you all apart. Your number is up, you can bet your last dollar. If Claude Hopper finds you an old brogy holler, thank you for listening. Please keep checking back. I will keep updating this with new stories every day until Halloween. Stay creepy.